Hello my darlings, my dears, and welcome to an unboxing of the Woodland Wardens Oracle Deck by Jessica Rue. I'm excited to seize my scissors here and slit through the cling film and reveal this gorgeous deck to you to speak a little bit about my first impressions. My name is Jesse Huntenberg. I am a professional tarot card reader. I am also the creatrix of the forthcoming Genius Garden Tarot. And I also have a lovely, wonderful free offering for you called Tarot Spreads for the Brave and Curious. You can use it for Oracle decks as well. 22 spreads and you can get that completely free by clicking the link below. But now let's get back to this gorgeous beautiful deck. I was just completely enchanted with the illustrations, with the imagery, and with the overall color palette and feel of this deck. I just I just love it. I just love it. I love like the off-white background. I love the sweet little animals, but you know, in high contrast to the colors and the backgrounds behind them, it really, really does it for me. Now, this deck is by Jessica Rue. It is published by Andrews McNeil Publishing. As of me speaking, I think it came out like a month and a half ago, and we are in May, so it is uh, of 2022, so it is a relatively new deck. Inspired by the history, folklore, and mythology, artist Jessica Rue's debut oracle deck transports seekers to another time and place, offering insight rooted in the magic of flora and fauna. Very, very excited. So we have a nice small little box here. This is what I'm a huge fan of, okay? As beautiful as huge, elaborate boxes are for tarot and oracle, I just find them to be so uh, impractical. I have little compartments where each of the decks can slide into and they're just like just big enough for the deck and when I have these huge boxes that are like twice the size, three times the size of the deck itself, it just makes it completely impractical and I like to keep my deck in a box. I like to keep it, um, you know, protected. I will use tarot bags or tarot pouches for decks that come in much bigger boxes and can't be stored in my storage system. But I really do prefer the sturdy feel of a box. I love the feeling of like opening it and that, that suction. Let me just take this pair of scissors and cut along the seam so as not to damage the box. And I'm also one of those people that if like the box gets a little, like I'm not really, I'm not really that bothered by it. Um, I don't ever expect to keep any deck I use in pristine condition. Um, I have the full intention of using them all and doing so in a way that can be a little bit reckless at times. What can I say? All right, so let's see. Let's see if we get that little suction. Yep. Perfect. Also, you can see on the sides, there's this beautiful little like light brown mustard yellow detailing, tiny flowers and tiny little leaves. Again, the whole woodland theme is just so deeply appealing to me. I love it so much and I love, oh, I'm just really excited to get in here. Okay, so we have a guidebook that comes with this Oracle deck that I find to be pretty, oh, look at this beautiful hair on the back. I love this. I love this deep hunter green uh, color that was chosen as the background for this box and for the guidebook as well. To my studio mates at the Warren, a make space where I made my closest friends. Well, isn't that adorable? What a beautiful dedication. So we have a table of contents that basically lists all of the cards. Oh my goodness, they're all in um they're all in order. Okay, so let's see. It lists all of the cards. Okay, so there are there aren't really page numbers. That for me could get a little tricky. All right, this is why. Because I'm not really up on my um, Roman numerals. <laughs> oh my goodness, I remember actually being in third grade, I remember learning Roman numerals and I remember asking my teacher who was a nun, which is not an important detail, but like always feels important to me when I tell the story. 
what the point of Roman numerals were. I'm like, they're so, I didn't use the word archaic because I didn't know the word archaic when I was eight years old or nine years old. But I just didn't really see the point in having to memorize these numerals when I didn't really see them much in my experience, from my day-to-day -day experience. And she responded, well, sometimes elevators use Roman numerals. Hashtag epic fail. <laughs> um, so for me, that's going to be a little problematic. What it basically means is every time I pull a card, I'm going to have to go uh, down the list here and basically find it. I love the ladybug that we have crawling on the page. I love the, um, the, the, the branches with the leaves and the flowers up here. Like the, the detail so far, the detail and the art so far is just the best. Look at this introduction. Even though it's in black and white, it's still just the most beautiful thing. Let me see if I should read. Ooh, okay, so far I actually am going to read a little bit of the introduction for you, I believe. I have always been fascinated by animals. As a child, I spent my time outdoors, picking cicada shells off trees, catching fireflies, finding salamanders hiding under rocks, and painting what I saw. On the rare occasion when I wasn't outside, I was curled up indoors with a book. I loved escaping the mundane by discovering Aesop's fables, imagining a life on the farm of Charlotte's Web, or wishing I would meet or could meet the shy badger or silly toad from the wind in the willows. I was drawn to animals in a way I could not understand, wishing to talk with them as I did with my own friends. In a way, Woodland Wardens is an attempt to rekindle communication with my oldest companions, both real and imaginary. Well, isn't that beautiful and magical and a fantastic intention for creating this deck? So I'm already enchanted. I must say, Jessica, I'm completely enchanted and I love the way that you write. It does help that the individual who creates the deck can write well because I find a, a guidebook is so essential for an oracle deck, so essential. Sure, you can path work into the image on the card and you can read the message. It's usually included on the bottom or the keyword and just use that as a form, you know, with which to interpret. I really enjoy the process or the practice of pulling an oracle card, referencing the guidebook, and reading the meaning or the message in the guidebook. That is primarily how I work with Oracle. When I read for others, I read tarot, I don't read Oracle, but I read Oracle for myself because it's more of a spiritual practice. It's more of a meditation, something I do in the mornings to kind of get my mind right. So the fact that Jessica writes well is a really good sign and it's good for me personally because of the way that I tend to work with Oracle decks. So. How to use the cards and the guidebook. Again, another delightful little illustration. Here we have a collection of uh, suggested spreads. One card pool, past, present, future, very basic. Past season, current season, next season, following season. So like a four season spread, I like that. Um, and then you can combine combination with tarot, six card pool. I find that tarot and oracle does actually work really well together. And one of the reasons why this deck was so appealing to me as well is because um, I have a deck called the Wildwood Tarot that I really think is going to work well and play well with this Oracle deck. Okay, so then we just dive right in from that moment on. Very, very, you know, a couple spreads, suggested way to use, and now let's just get into the meat and potatoes of this. All right, here is a little author bio. Jessica Rue is a Nashville-based freelance illustrator and the author of Floriography, an Illustrated Guide to the Victorian Language of Flowers. Uh, a seasoned reader of tarot, she loves to include hidden symbolism inspired by the Rider Waite Smith deck in her illustrations. Ooh, maybe we can find some of that. Okay, so now that you've got an idea of you know why she created the deck, let's actually go through. Let's go through. So when we have is the first card, the mouse and the buttercup, innocence, key zero. This honestly, key zero makes me think of tarot, innocence makes me think of the fool. So we already have a correspondence there. Buttercups are actually blooming where I am right now. It is the beginning of May, it is buttercup season. And I really, really love the color palette. I love how the colors play together. Um, this blue sky in the background is just, oh, it's just, I mean, if you've seen my website or anything, or even if you've seen some of the Genius Garden Tarot, you know I love the color combination of green and blue. Um, so this right off the right off the bat, this is kind of um, you know this just kind of 
jumps out at me as a beautiful card. And I'm just going to actually read a little bit about this first card just to get an idea of what the interpretations or the card meanings sound like. Oh, see? Like the fool in a tarot deck, the mouse in the buttercup is numbered zero. Both cards mark the start of a journey and both remind us that we have much to learn. You may be embarking on a journey or starting down a new path. Remember that innocence and a lack of understanding are not negative qualities. Instead, they remind us of our capacity for growth, adaptability, and learning. Um, there is also a reverse meaning uh, included in the guidebook here, which I don't often see, especially in an oracle deck, okay? You may find an upright and a reverse meaning in some tarot card guidebooks, though it's a rarity. Um, and I've never seen it in an Oracle deck guidebook before. So that is actually actually really neat um, and note, notable and noteworthy. And we have two questions, two guiding questions at the end of the meaning explanation to kind of invite further investigation. What do I hope to learn on this new path and what potential dangers should I look out for? Okay, so that's the basic layout of, and, and you know, each card has one page and even, even a little bit less. So we're not going into, the guidebook itself doesn't go into a lot of depth when it comes to the cards, but it does give you exactly what it is that you need in order to derive a meaning from it, a message, and it gives you some questions so that you can actually consider the meaning of the card in greater depth and detail. Basically, it gives you exactly what you need um, it doesn't give you much more, and I kind of, I kind of dig that. It leaves a little bit of space for you to come up with interpretations on your own. So now I'm just going to kind of flip through and show some of the cards. The Cat and Lavender, Independence. We all know that cats can care for themselves. I'm interested to read what Lavender, uh, how Lavender corresponds to Independence, but I can tell you that Lavender is just absolutely one of my favorite herbs. The spider and passion flower, creative ingenuity. You know, the spider usually represents, um, rather than creativity or ingenuity, consistency and perseverance. But if you really think about it, whenever a web is destroyed, immediately the spider must leap and reconstruct that web. And depending on where it is, what's happening, the wind, they must kind of readjust their pattern according to what it is that's happening around them. So that's a really interesting, neat little new take on the archetype of the spider. The hair and oak, new opportunities. Well, I can definitely see the hair and new opportunities because hares and rabbits and such often represent abundance and growth. And when I think of new opportunities, I definitely think of uh, new growth, the potential for greater abundance. Um, and oak is usually a a tree that is associated with cemeteries. So that's kind of an interesting juxtaposition. Again, I'd be interested to see, um, you know, what the meaning or what the guidebook has to say about that card. The bear and cedar leadership. The sheep and blackberry devotion. Oh, I love this card. As much as I love, love, love this gorgeous off-white background here, it seems to me that some of the more vibrant or just bolder, darker colors are really leaping out to me in this deck as a beautiful choice. I just, I just think that this card is beautiful. There's something really beautiful and engaging about this card that I really love. And that concept of devotion, the concept of devotion, I think is a really important concept to consider from time to time. The frog and the lotus metamorphosis. The chipmunk and laurel. Success. So it's become obvious that in each card we have one animal and one plant featured, okay, and that that is an overriding um, theme or it, it's, it's a structure that lends the deck some consistency across the cards. The chipmunk and the laurel. Success. So I'd like to return to the guidebook and just take a look at how Jessica relates the animal and the plant to one another in order to build the meaning of each card. 
The chipmunk and laurel symbolizes a new venture that will surely lead to success. The chipmunk often takes the road less traveled, finding hidden pathways and adventure along the way. The laurel is a symbol of victory used to crown the winners in the ancient Olympic games. Together, they tell us to take charge of our destiny, carve our own path and find success. So this was like a really good example of what I was looking for, honestly, where the guidebook says, here's a chipmunk, here's the laurel. This is how the chipmunk symbolizes success. Here's how the laurel symbolizes success. Here's how together, taken together, they express this omen of success. So it is written in a really straightforward language. I don't think you'll ever be left wandering as long as you, wondering rather, as long as you reference the guidebook. Why an animal and a plant have been paired, Jessica will describe or explain exactly why she chose that pairing and how that pairing actually builds or creates the meaning that's on the keyword or that's in the keyword area section of the card. So we have the elk and ash, strength. The weasel and pine, introspection. Oh my gosh, I love this duck. <laughs> I love how you can see the duck's wings spread and how the duck is just turning her head to the side. The goat and the willow, overcoming obstacles. The lizard and the pitcher plant, stagnation. A little bit different, just in terms of color palette. Um, but it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. Can I just say that these illustrations are generally beautiful? Now the moth and the eucalyptus and ending, yes, this moth is very much representative of death. Um, just, they're just rendered so beautifully. The vulture and asphodel, upheaval. And I actually don't mind that in some of these cards there isn't um, great contrast in color between the animal in the foreground and the background. That is also a choice that I've made, um, specifically at this time what I can recall with the high priestess in my deck, because sometimes you want you want folks to be drawn into the darkness. You want the darkness to actually play a role or speak uh, a message through the card. The deer and oat, healing. Oh, that's such a sweet little deer. The crow and dogwood, intelligence. Okay, so crows are so incredibly smart. Um, some ravens have been known to drop walnuts on the road, on the highway, and wait until cars crack them open, and then they will promptly swoop down and take the meat from that walnut. Uh, you can see a salamander in, on, in the clothing of the court of the suit of wands in the tarot. And the suit of wands in the tarot is represented by the element of fire. Um, so I see this salamander here. I think the element of fire, and then I see black pepper, black pepper spicy. Also inspiration, like general creativity and activity is attributed to the suit of wands in the tarot. So I'm beginning to see some of the correspondences that Miss Rue suggested she included in these cards. The boar and the pumpkin, confidence. Autumn vibes for sure. The bat and hellebore, intuition. Oh, how I love, bats are so cute and I love hellebore. Hellebore blooms, OMG, for like two months. This is something I've realized um, just this year. I knew it bloomed in like almost like the, the very at the very beginning of spring, but it's still blooming, it's still around. Um, so it sticks around for a while, which is cool. The caiman and poppy dreams come into there. You might shake a little bit, but I'm like, come into focus, please. The skunk and magnolia protection. The owl and hop wisdom. As you can see, this is just a gloriously beautiful deck. The hound and pair loyalty. Oof, I just love the regal carriage of that hound and how the pear has been cut in half. Very sumptuous. The Martin and Foxglove mischief. All of these are so lovely. The Wolf and Rosehip guardianship. The Bee and Pomegranate productivity. And I think I'm going to leave it there in terms of showing the entire deck Oh, the otter and the cattail piece. Oh, how I love otters. Oh, how otters are just my favorite. 
Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to take, I don't want to shuffle the rest of this deck for various reasons. What I am going to do is I'm going to shuffle these cards for a second and I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to ask a question and just to see how these cards read um, and to give you an idea of how these cards read. Well, that's the card. So my question is, where is clarity eluding me? Um, where's clarity eluding me? And we have the mouse and the buttercup. Innocence. Knowing that this card aligns with the fool leads me to, basically leads me to interpret that I'm very much at the beginning of a new stage of my path because I am at this really exciting beginning stage, beginner stage. There's a lot that I'm unaware of. I'm starting the journey. I don't really know exactly where it's going to go. And great experiences await me. But many of these are experiences that I've neither, either not had before or I haven't had in precisely this way. There's going to be obstacles. Um, and I may know where I'm headed, but I may not have clarity on what the road ahead looks like. And you know what? That is okay. So... Would I recommend the Woodland Wardens Oracle deck? Yes, I would. I think it's adorable. I think it's a wonderful addition to an Oracle deck collection, especially if you really enjoy woodland imagery, if you enjoy um, Botanica at all, if you enjoy color palettes where the colors themselves are a little bit more subdued or in like grayscale, but also are very bold at the same time, and if you really enjoy great illustration, which I do, I really enjoy great illustration. If you're someone who also really appreciates very straightforward interpretations, if you're someone who likes to keep your readings very brief, I would highly recommend this deck. This seems like a good daily pool deck, like a good morning deck. It doesn't take much time to read the interpretations. You don't really need to know much about tarot or oracle to understand Jessica is very, um, you know, she's very direct in her interpretations. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to working with this deck, incorporating it with tarot. So much love, my dear. Thank you for hanging out with me. Feel free to download Tarot Spreads for the Brave and Curious, completely free collection of 22 of my favorite, long lasting, tried and true tarot spreads. Happy, happy card slinging. And I will see you soon.